All right, so welcome back once again. Uh, so we've completed uh, the ministry of the teacher as well. Uh, any questions? Anybody has any questions? Anyone would like to share their thoughts uh, up to what we have done right now? Anybody has any questions? Right. So what I thought was, uh, we'll not go into the ministry of the pastor. We we'll, uh, we will do that uh, the following week, uh, and and so what I thought was, uh, as I was saying, I will also put the uh, midterm assessment up uh, on the stream, so the e-learning students can also uh, begin to work on that. But uh, what I thought was, we'll just do a quick review in this this lesson. Um, this session, entire session, we'll do a quick review of what we did from chapter one till chapter eight or chapter nine that we have completed. Uh, is that okay? Is that okay if we can do just a quick review? I know we did a lot, quite a lot of information, uh, but I thought we'll do a quick review, and then uh, even as the assignments has been po will be posted by this week, uh, we can probably refresh. It'll be a good refreshing time. Uh, Right. Uh, so we'll just do a quick review from chapter one, and then we'll close this session. And then uh, uh, next week, we'll begin with the ministry of the pastor. Right. So let's move to chapter one. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this review is because uh, I feel it's very important that you know uh, we understand this whole thing of the evangelist, the teacher, uh, understand what what is it to be called into these ministries, right? Uh, so I don't want to be in a hadi. We still have a lot of time as well, so we can focus on, you know, spend a lot of time on uh, the ministry of the pastor. So uh, let's look at uh, what we've done up to now, right? First introduction, we did the fivefold ministry. Now in this chapter, some of the important things that we covered was that uh, God is the one who calls us into this ministry right the lord has made or has put some to be apostles and prophets evangelists pastors and teachers so it's a divine call it's not a man-made call right so each one of you must uh, you know must recognize this it's a divine call god has given you the gifts that you have and um, uh, we are to use it in the right way right uh, and these gifts are given both to men and to women. Uh, it is for what? To glorify God's kingdom, to build the church. And the purpose is given there from Ephesians 11 to 16. We looked at it for the perfecting, which is complete equipping of the saints, so that the saints can do the work of the ministry, resulting in the building of the body of Christ. Now, um, no matter what we are doing, right evangelist pastor teacher anything in the fivefold ministry or even anything apart from that using our gifts that god has given us uh these three must always be in our hearts and minds right we for the perfecting meaning that we are doing this to equip the saints i'm leading worship or i'm preaching and teaching to equip the saints right first thing is i know it's a divine call god has called me it's not by my own merit, but it's by the grace of God. And why has he given it to me? For the equipping of the saints, right? So it's not about me. It's not about, okay, am I doing it right? Yes, we have to prepare. There's a, there's a responsibility that God has given us. But the picture is we must equip the saints. Two, that the saints can do the work of the ministry, basically raising up other leaders, right? To replicate what we do so what the lord jesus do he raised up leaders he said go and do whatever i did and greater works than these you will do right and when we do this we are resulting in building up the body of christ so we continue to do this always every day ministry will as long as this ministry it will stand on these three uh purposes or guidelines right the equipping of saints for the saints to do the work of the ministry and to build the body of christ right and so we looked at that in chapter one and how uh, the ministry gift and the ministry function 
many people can function as an evangelist teacher or missionaries however the ministry gift is given to that that person that makes them special for that right and we looked at remember the example of billy graham right you know, he's got the ministry gift of the evangelist right? uh, but we all have the ministry function because jesus said go and make disciples so we all are called to also evangelize right and here's the thing there is an anointing that goes with each ministry gift right so if you feel that god has called you for uh, you know preaching or evangelizing or teaching or worship leading preparing material whatever god has called you for there is an anointing of god upon that and i remember this i remember sharing this as well and i've written it down here so that you know uh without the anointing we will be nothing we need the anointing of the holy spirit to minister to people's lives right greater the call greater is the requirement for the anointing now how do we gain the anointing it's all up to us god anoints us but we are called to ask for more of the anointing uh, and the more of god's leading in our lives right so uh this is very important the lord jesus himself he he walked in all these gifts all the ministry gifts we walked in it and he expects us also to flow in each one of them right uh without the anointing it's just going to be uh works right uh, then we looked at the evangelist chapter 2 evangel meaning to proclaim the good news and how did jesus do the evangelist be the evangelist right as an example he was empowered uh he had uh, he he looked at the audience they were poor they were sinners they were lost sheep of israel the message very important was repentance forgiveness the kingdom of god faith and and many other right he demonstrated all of this uh even as he taught uh then methods he used he taught and there was signs wonders and miracles right and he traveled around jesus didn't sit in one place and say okay this is what uh, i am called to do this i'll be only here now when we come to a time that we are in maybe we are called to be at a place but when when we say travel uh we can also say that he, he was when we want to apply to ourselves just just being able to reach out to people right uh wherever we go we may be traveling from our office to the workplace or we may be just going out on a saturday uh, on a weekend just with our family and you get this opportunity so being able to minister then he also looked at challenges right the lord jesus himself had challenges the apostles had challenges many of them martyred for the faith uh, there were religious oppositions there were government uh, leaders who were opposing there were societies there were uh, so many people opposing so there will be challenges right and and so god has called us you know somebody asked me over the last week uh, is is uh, evangelism going to stop with all the anti-conversion world right and uh, and i think the answer is very simple there's going to be all kinds of bills coming up uh, but god's word is the standard when god said uh, go and make disciples go and preach go do it we have to go do it right so god is above all these bills that are coming and going right uh, the standard remains the same go reach and preach the gospel right then we also looked at support he was able to bless other people and he received support from other people as well then we looked at the evangelist in the early church how god used the, the lord jesus raised up disciples to be evangelists uh philip was called an evangelist the apostle paul was considered a great evangelist because he went out uh, from place to place ministering planting churches even though it was an apostolic calling uh, uh, he had the attributes of an evangelist as well right and chapter four we looked at restoration uh, of the uh, ministry of the evangelist and how god raised up great evangelists peter waldo uh, john wickliffe uh, 
John and Charles Wesley, uh, George Whitfield, Billy Graham, A. A. Allen, all these wonderful evangelists that God used to raise up this whole ministry of evangelism. Then in the early 1900s started the healing evangelistic teams. Uh, Oral Roberts, D.L. Osborne, they were all uh, you know, primarily used for the healing evangelists. Reinhard Bonke, uh, these are people that God used to, uh, you know, to restore the ministry of evangelism, right? Then was, we studied about the practical keys of doing the uh, work of the evangelist, that is to follow the biblical pattern, develop in the supernatural, right? As an evangelist, we must expect, right? Expect supernatural signs and wonders. Um, never feel that, okay, I can't do this, or this is not what God's called me to do, or, uh, you know, never feel that you're alone, right? As a person, like physically, you may be alone, but God is with us, right? He empowers us, right? So he, he will give us the wisdom to go and reach out. He'll, he will, uh, you know, that's why we look at this, no, how Jesus, he went, he prayed, and then he went out and ministered the gospel. So the, the whole part the, of prayer and the quiet place, being in God's presence is the key, uh, you know, to doing any kind of ministry, right? So developing the supernatural, uh, developing the ability to present the gospel to varied audiences. There will be atheists, there will be people who are from other faiths, people who uh, still have questions, maybe even Christians who have a lot of questions, is to develop a way to minister to them. Uh, very important, maintain your passion for souls, right? That, that want or that passion to see people uh, accept Christ. That is something which God can put inside you, and then we can. We must develop that. We say, God, I want to see many more lives being touched, many more people uh, being saved, uh, and and brought from this, you know, place of wickedness of the things that the enemy has done, uh, brought into God's kingdom. Right? And it's so wonderful to see testimonies, right? Uh, people who say I was an atheist, uh, but then you know I heard the gospel through one person, or I heard this message, and I accepted Christ. It's such a powerful encounter, right? Uh, so maintain that passion for souls. And in a world that we are living in, it's so easy to mind our own business and you know just do what we have to do. It's very easy, right? Uh, because we are we have a lot of work. We are busy ourselves, um, and so we want to do what has been assigned to us. But uh, God is calling us to, you know, keep an eye out. The Lord Jesus did that, right? He was probably also busy, but he had that passion for souls. Therefore, he was willing to let go of all those thousands for that one person, right? Uh, and a good example was the woman with the issue of bleeding. You know, throngs were following Jesus, and she said, "Only if I can get, touch the hem of his garment." And the moment she touched it, she was healed. And the Lord Jesus says, "Your faith has made you well." It was it was such a wonderful, uh, wonderful display of God's love for that for that soul for that person. Right? Uh, learn how to equip saints in the ministry. Uh, in the same way, uh, what you do, how you minister, how you evangelize, give opportunities to younger people or people who are interested to be an evangelist, uh, uh, encourage, build them up, give them opportunities. Uh, when ministering as an evangelist, if you're ministering to a local church, submit to the leader of the local church, be sensitive to what kind of, uh, you know, to the local church order, right? That meaning just be sensitive where you are. Are you in an urban setting? Are you in a rural setting? Uh, what are their belief systems? Or uh, they may believe in simple things that you may not agree with. You don't have to rebuke them. and right. So be sensitive where, as you're leading. And uh, as an evangelist, very easy to you know just uh, go about reaching out to many places. But we must be also remember that we are to be part of a local church. Right, uh, get connected to the local church, and uh, chapter six was beautiful. Right, we we studied so much on this. The Jesus as our example, 
right he as a teacher what did he do he uh, the nature of christ teaching method he taught with authority he taught with then he had uh, he taught with love right then he characterized his 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 teaching with wisdom right uh, and then he combined it with the supernatural ministry so there was authority there was love there was power there was wisdom there was supernatural you see a combination of all of this right then he the way he taught was through figurative language uh, parables allegories figures of speech exaggerations stories you know, we use that word hyperboles which means exaggerations can it's easier for a rich man poor man to uh, 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 sorry it's easier for a camel to go through a eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of god so it's a hyperbole it's an exaggeration and uh, he used these as a way of communicating his message then he used parables right uh, parables which are earthly stories which are with heavenly meanings and there were kingdom parables there were earthly parables and uh, he used these parables for two reasons not just so that it can sound entertaining but to illustrate truth and to obscure the truth from those who are hard and unyielding right uh, so we can even as we are as teachers we can use examples use stories um, you know where it's possible uh, you know if there is a need use metaphors or uh, uh, hyperboles uh, but it should make sense don't we are not to use it just because we want to make it sound fancy right um but if there's a need and you feel that you can add this in your teaching uh feel free to do that right um so we looked at some of the examples or the themes of parables that the lord jesus taught so some of them are here forgiveness generosity humility judgment kingdom of god the lord's return god's mercy on prayer etc right there's so much he spoke about there uh yeah then we go to chapter 7 quickly uh the teacher in the early church uh, this is this is again a very important lesson that we learned the teaching believer in romans the ministry gift of teaching then do and then teach right it's easy to just keep teaching but we must be doers of the word then we can teach it to others uh, uh, do not teach the commandments of men so meaning there will be many doctrines or many dogmas new kinds of understandings coming up be very careful as a teacher to make sure that you're following god's word as a standard uh, for every every new teaching that comes up right uh, i was quite uh, surprised when i heard this uh, from a very reputed a very famous preacher and leave the person unnamed but he was preaching and he, in the mess in the in the whole teaching it was more of a teaching or a teaching preaching session and in that sermon he he starts talking about how jesus was uh you know the, talking about the ministry of jesus and he in between he says that uh, Jesus was born again. Now it was very subtle, very subtly put into a between a few sentences. But I thought to myself, right, uh, was Jesus born again? What do you think? Was was Jesus born again? Any thoughts? No, he doesn't have to. Yeah. Thank you, John. He, he was not born again. He doesn't need to be born again. Right? So, uh, but, uh, but it was sent, you know, wonderful teacher, wonderful preacher. So, uh, so we must be very careful, right? We must be very careful to see that uh, not a person a person should not be our foundation 
Jesus is our foundation. The word of God is our foundation. Right? Um, then he says, go teach all nations. Uh, the Holy Spirit is our teacher. Uh, the greatest, 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 most powerful teacher that we have. Teach with the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. And that's what the Lord, uh, that's what Apostle Paul did uh, when he went to Corinth. He taught them in Mars Hill. He's standing in Aeropagus. He taught with the wisdom of God. Right? Imagine if Apostle Paul had messed up there. There wouldn't be a church in Athens and then in Corinth. Right? Yeah, imagine he just said something and it was all about, you know, I was in Arabia, I did this, I did that. He, there's no this he goes straight he hits the nail on the head and he says this unknown god that you have been praying to i see around that you're all religious you have a statue of an unknown god let me tell you what that unknown god is immediately he got the attention of his listeners right the wisdom of the spirit he was able to you know really reach out and touch their lives and uh, it says that later on they called him back and many of them had uh, you know accepted christ for that simple message right the wisdom of the spirit how to portray things right and then he allowed uh, to receive material gifts ensure sound doctrine very sternly he says timothy timothy now you're in the leader in ephesus you're a pastor there the church is growing. There are bishops and deacons who are much elder to you. You're a young man now. Uh, but don't worry. You ensure sound doctrine. Preach the word in season, out of season. Whether you feel it or whether you don't feel, stay with the word of God. Right Now, why is he writing this? Because he's already dealt with problems in the church in Thessalonica. He's already dealt with problems in the church in Corinth, in Ephesus. All kinds of things are happening there. And so he says, ensure sound doctrine. That the doctrine of God's word, it, it is sound, it is right. And uh, then he addresses the issue of women teachers. And uh, I'm, I hope all of us are, are you know, uh, convicted of this answer, meaning you, you know, you know, this has caused a lot of problems. Uh, but we want to ensure that each one of us are on the same page. If you have questions regarding this, feel free to ask, right? Uh, because this is very important that you take into context, right? Women teachers, and I hope all of us are, you know, uh, assured in our hearts in, in the classroom, right? Be assured. Never feel that, you know, this is not what God wants me to do or Never feel insecure or inferior. No, the same anointing of the Holy Spirit is upon you as upon the men of God, right? So uh, never feel lower in any way. God has called each one of us to be on level ground, right? Then the Lord Jesus uh, also wants us to develop the ability to teach well, raise up other teachers, raise up other uh, men and women of God who will be able to teach. And we saw that beautiful example of how, oh, you know, uh, in the book of Acts, uh, Paul leaves, Cor he leaves from Corinth, he goes into, uh, I think it was Macedonia. And then that time, oh, Aquila and Priscilla are in, uh, in Corinth, oh, sorry, they're in Ephesus, and they meet uh, Apollos there. They say Apollos is teaching the whole thing of John's baptism, and they say, okay, Apollos, let me bring you up to speed. Let me update you on what's happened. The Lord Jesus came. He died. This is what happened. Now we can teach on the baptism of, of, of uh, the Holy Spirit and how the Lord Jesus, uh, what the Lord Jesus has done for us. Immediately, he accepts it. They say, okay, you go to Corinth, look after the church there, and he's able to teach and you know raise up leaders there that many years later paul is saying uh, including apollos in the list of the great wonderful teachers in the church in Corinth. so it's very important to raise up leaders the apostle paul did that timothy titus and many 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 other leaders he raised up uh, and beware of false teachers right people will say that jesus was just a man 
oh he was not the messiah he's got he's a wonderful teacher that's it uh, uh and uh, there's no heaven there's no hell no or it could be something like there is no rapture right uh, which can come in a very subtle way uh, so we must be careful uh, of what we teach and uh, be aware right now i want to be i want to just uh, uh, you know bring a point there just because somebody has not understood something and they may have a certain understanding uh doesn't make them a false teacher as a whole right not like everything is false right so even as we you know listen to many people online or reading books we may come across things that are or teachings that may not really you know uh, we may not agree with may not be in line with god's word but we don't disqualify the person right maybe he's he he has got many other things uh, right and he's you know his uh, many other teachings are wonderful so we take what is needed and what we feel that is not right or if it's incorrect and you have questions about it just leave it aside right uh, so don't this never disqualify a person just because uh, you know he or she has just said that one thing right uh, i hope i'm getting through what i'm trying to say right i hope i'm putting the message across in the right way so there may be people who are great ministers of god for 20 30 years in the ministry done a wonderful work in ministry they may say something which may not be in line with the word of god so don't disqualify the person as a false teacher so uh, but we can take what is important right our our job is to not judge people and say okay this is a false teacher that is a, not a false teacher and all of that but our job is is to our responsibility is to take what is right that is true the word of god and apply it and build ourselves up right so we can do that and then we looked at chapter 9 today the practical keys of doing the ministry of the teacher right so today or tomorrow i will put up the midterm assessment uh, uh and then we can uh, just encourage you to maybe uh start working on it it'll be for 50 marks and i'll put a due date as well so you can again once it's complete just uh post it back uh, i uh, i think it is oh, hold on yeah uh, you can put it in the classwork tab itself and then you'll be marked for it and so the next test will be uh, for another 50 marks and both together will be your final grades uh, for the semester right so any questions before we close class has been very quiet today but any questions today any thoughts okay all right maybe one of us can close in prayer uh Yes, Lubega, would you like to close in prayer, please? Lubega, success, anyone can close in prayer. Uh, shall we pray, please? Yes. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, we thank you for what you have done today. We thank you for using our pastor for us. We thank you, Lord, because your entrance of your word bringeth understanding. Thank you for the understanding of your word this morning. Receive all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My Father, my God, I pray as you are going, Father, please go with us in the name of Jesus. And as we go through back our notes, let it be a fresh fire of you mm. in the life in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, success. And thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, have a great week ahead. Uh, I'll see you next week. God bless.